Hi everybody, welcome to another Real Rugby video this week. Today I am playing Fantasy Selector again and I'm picking my all-time greatest Springbok 15 of the professional era. So a slight twist here, I'm only looking at players that have made their debut since the World Cup final in 1995. Uh, same format as before, I will go through my list of names in each position and ultimately tell you who I've picked uh, in my Dream 15. But before I get into that, I want to say a big thank you to today's sponsor. Big thanks to the guys over at Scrum Pro. Now with Scrum Pro, you can set your career alight with the world's best digital rugby CV that's shareable and it's free. It's one simple tool that is very easy to use. With Scrum Pro's new management portal, finding new talent and managing existing talent has never been easier. Being part of the Scrum Pro community means having an opportunity to engage with former and current professional rugby players around the world to offer career guidance and advice. So be part of this community and sign up to Scrum Pro today. Get seen, get saved, get your dream. Guys, it's a fantastic portal. Bruce and the guys over at Scrum Pro is doing a great job for the rugby community. Go and click on the link in the description below and sign up to Scrum Pro today. Before I continue with the video, I also want to take this opportunity to tell you about our Patreon page. As I've mentioned before, guys, there's going to be content that's very, very unique to Patreon that we will make available to our, uh, YouTube, uh, to our YouTube community. Um, videos that won't be showed on YouTube or on Facebook like full length matches and other highlights will be available on Patreon. Or if you just like the Real Rugby channel and you want to show me a little bit of support, I'd greatly appreciate it. So click on the link below, go and check out our Patreon page and be part of the Real Rugby community. Okay, getting into the team. Same format as always. I'm going to start with the fullbacks. And again, just to reiterate that I'm only looking at players that have made their debut since that World Cup final in 1995. So my shortlist for fullback in fifth position, I went with Konrad Janches. And number four, I went with Tinas Dalport. In third place, I've got Vili Leroux. In second spot, I went with Percy Montgomery. And in top spot, I picked Franz Stein. Now, it might be a little bit of a controversial choice because uh, there was a sort of a big gap in Franz Stein's career um, between 2012 and 2017 when he came back. But I think he played his best rugby for the Springboks during that 2009-2010 period when he was at fullback. Not taking anything away from what Vili Leroux and Percy Montgomery did uh, in the Springbok side. Um, but I think Franz Stein with his... Uh, flexibility in the back line and his ability to play, uh, you know, to cover other positions uh, and that monster boot from the back. Uh, I love seeing him play at fullback. Um, some honorable mentions. Pat Lambie doesn't feature in this shortlist because I do mention him at flyoff. Um, and I think Jakub van der Westhuizen and Zane Kirchner were also decent fullbacks. But ultimately, I went with Franz Stein. I'm sure that most of you would go with Percy. Um, but I'm a big Franz Stein guy and I picked him at 15. Going into the wings, uh, top 10 and 10th position, I went with Cornell Hendricks, who only had two seasons with the Springboks, but played very well. At number 9, I went with Gio Aplon. At number 8, Stefan Blanche. At number 7, I picked Francois Hogart, who I think was a better wing than a scrum off for the Springboks. Uh, at number 6, I went with Makazola Mapimpi. At number 5, I picked Brayton Polser. At number 4, I went with Slap Chips, Peter Rousseau. In third spot, I had to make space for Cheslin Colby. Uh, but my top two wings uh, is that combination from 2007 on the right wing. I went with JP Peterson. Uh, he had a very, very long career with the Springboks. Played in three World Cups. World Cup winner. Played fantastically well for the Sharks for over a decade. Um, and it's good to see that he's still playing today and still contributing to, to South African rugby. Uh, he was a very, very good wing. Played fantastically well. Remember those two tries he scored against England uh, in, the, in the pool game of the 2007 World Cup? Those stand out. But a, an all-round fantastic player who could cover uh, the fullback position um, as well. But number one and on the left, uh, on the left wing, I had to pick Brian Abana. It goes without saying he is... Probably the greatest, if not one of the two greatest uh, wings that has ever played for South Africa and probably one of the best wings that has ever played rugby uh, globally. Just a fantastic player, 67 test tries, um, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal what he's done and what he's achieved on the field. But more importantly, I think the type of guy that he is off the field makes him the complete springbok. So I'm very happy with this selection of Brian Abana and uh, JP Peterson on the wings. Similarly, at center, I went with a combination, but to go through the top 10, in 10th position, I went with Marius Hubert, scored that famous hat-trick against the All Blacks in 2004. Ninth spot, I went with Jesse Creel. In number eight, I picked Adrian Jacobs. 
At number seven, I went with Lucanio Am. At number six, I picked Jean de Jong. At number five, I went with Damien de Allender. At number four, I picked Jan Saarfontein. In third spot, I went with Andre Sneijman. But the top two uh, in the center position, again, is a combination. I went with Jean de Villiers on the inside center, Springbok captain for many years, um, played well over 100 tests for South Africa. He was known sort of as the intercept king um, because of his ability to read the game and score a lot of tries um, on the counter-attack and with uh, intercepts. So Jean de Villiers, one of the all-time greatest centers that has played the game, not just in South Africa. And I picked him next, next to his Springbok center partner for many years, Jacques Fury who was a fantastic attacking player, but his defensive capabilities and his defensive organization of the back line made him a you know, world-class player. So loved seeing those two play next to each other. I thought they were brilliant during the mid to late 2000s. Um, they should have played many, many more, more tests together. So as a combination, I went with Jean de Villiers and, uh, and Jacques Fury. Looking at the fly-offs, uh, in fifth position, I picked Yanni de Beer who looking back at the highlights he was actually a very decent fly off and not because of the five drops that he kicked against england um he he was a he was a decent fly off and i really liked watching him play in fourth spot i went with butch james third spot i went with pat lambie second spot i went with mornay stain and in top spot i had to pick andre pollard um, i think pollard is the complete package he's a fantastic fly off um, brilliant tactical kicker defensively very very sound um, he's maybe not the 85-90% uh, kicker for post, but his anticipation uh, during the game and his direction that he gives his forwards and his backline is, is sublime. He had a fantastic 2019 World Cup, and I think his best years are still ahead of him. We're still going to see the best of Paul Art. So in the professional era, definitely have to go with Andre. I think he's the best that we've had in many, many years, probably since Nas or Henry Honeyball played. So he's, he's fantastic. Looking at the scrum offs, in fifth position I picked Quibus Reinach. In number four I went with Werner Swanepoel. In third spot I picked Ruan Pinar. In second spot I went with Faf de Klerk. And I think it's no surprise that in top spot I picked Furi de Prea. Um, it's always this debate and you would see it in other videos of mine. Who do you pick, Furi de Prea or Joes van der Westeisen? Joes uh, is not in the picture here, so it had to go to Furi. Uh, he ended his career in 2015 as Springbok captain and still showed how good he was. But if you think about that period, probably between 2007 and 2010, 2011, um, he was just the best, probably the best player on the planet. And uh, and I think back to 2009, they gave the IRB World Rugby Player of the Year award to Richie McCaw, which was a great injustice because I still personally feel that through the pre in that year was the greatest player uh, on the planet. He was just tactically so brilliant. Um, knew exactly which option to take, when to kick, when to pass, when to play the short side, when to skip somebody. Um, he was just a wonderful player and he directed that bull side so well with, with Victor on the field. Uh, I think he's one of the all-time greatest, not just scrum offs, but rugby players that has played the game and uh, very happy to pick him in the selection of mine. Going into the pack of forwards at number eight, uh, in fifth position I went with Gary Teichman. Number four I picked Joe van Nickerk. In third spot, I went with Bob Skinstad. I'm a Bob Skinstad guy. I'll always make space for him. In second spot, I went with Pierre Spies, which everybody is open to debate me. Um, I think he was a brilliant number eight. But top spot had to go to Dwayne Vermeulen. Uh, again, he just showed it in the, in the last World Cup. Uh, what an impact he has on the side. His ball carrying, his tackling, um, his never-say-die attitude. He is just phenomenal on the field and you know from two to five it doesn't really matter who i picked in which order because i don't think any of those players are as good as Dwayne. i think Dwayne, together with henny miller are probably the two best number eights that south africa has ever produced i'm a huge fan i'm glad he's coming back to pretoria and uh, and i hope he makes the lion series in 2021 right who's gonna complete this loose trio with Dwayne at number eight um at the flankers in 10th position i went with willem alberts at number nine, I picked Korne Krieger. At number eight, I went with Rassi Erasmus. At number seven, I picked Marcel Kutsia. At number six, I went with Heinrich Brousseau. At number five, I went with Francois Lowe. At number four, I picked Jean Smith. In third spot, I went with Andre Fenter. But my top two, and I think which would be a very, very good uh, combination, at number seven, I went with Peter Steff de Toy who if he didn't play that well consistently over the last couple of years, I probably would have picked somebody like Andre Fenter um, at seven. But Peter Steff, 
he just doesn't give up. It seems like, uh, you know, he's got this everlasting clock that just keeps on going and going and going. Uh, he plays the full 80, puts in probably the most tackles in every single game. Uh, he had a wonderful World Cup. You know, he's been South African Rugby Player of the Year three out of the last four years. World Rugby Player of the Year in 2019. It's just phenomenal, the, the type of form and consistent form that this guy is in. I'm a huge fan. I'm glad I'm glad he stayed um, in, 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 in Cape Town and he didn't go overseas. And I hope, I hope he plays another 50 tests for South Africa. I think he's just sublime and i would have played him next to skulk burger at number six um skulk just a legend of the game again somebody who came back after a serious illness and serious injury never thought that he would end his career the way it did but it just shows how tough he was um he wasn't known for his fitness or for his physical work in the gym but he was tough as nails and never gave anything less than 100 percent. so um i think geez skulk peter stephan duane can't really do better than that so i'm happy with that flank combination looking at the tight five at lock at 10th position i went with jandre Creer. at number four i picked Johan miller at number eight i went with Arge snyman at number seven i picked andres backer at number six i went with franco mostert at number five i picked donny rousseau at number four i picked lua de jager at number three i went with eben Etzebeth. but again combination takes it at the end of the day at number four i would pick uh, in fourth position in lock i would pick bucky's puerta right uh, next to victor matfield so for me this combination um they were known as the blood brothers at the bulls i think they still hold the world record for most tests as a, as a lock combination i think that record still stands they were just wonderful um bucky's brought the physicality and that grunt to the forward pack that victor didn't have victor was the more skillful player um, and very very solid at set piece but they complemented each other so well um, where, where Bucky's put in a lot more of the physical work Victor was allowed to play his more natural game uh, and play a little bit more loose but he had the skills to play that to play that way so um, just a wonderful combination I can't see anybody else being picked over Victor and Bucky's as good as all the other locks were so um, those guys make my second row selection in this team going into the front row at prop uh, in 10th position, I went with BJ Buerta. At number 9, I picked Adrian Garvey. When he sees this, he's going to kill me um, because I'm sure he would have been higher on the list. Sorry, Garves. At number 8, uh, I went with Trevor Nakane. At number 7, I picked Richard Bands. At number 6, I went with CJ van Alinde. In 5th spot, I picked Kubis Fasaghi. At number 4, I went with Guthrow Stienkamp. At number 3, I went with Steven Kitsov. But my tight head for this team has to be France Malherbe. I never used to be the biggest fan of France, but again, he showed over the last couple of years just how dominant in the scrums he is. And he gets around the park, I think, more than people give him credit for. He makes his tackles. If you watch that game against Wales and the quarterfinal against uh, Japan, just go and watch how many tackles France Malherbe made. So I think, you know, since he made his debut in 2013, he's been consistently good for the box uh, in that number three position. So I'm happy to pick France Malherbe next to the beast. Tendaim Tawarira, um, I don't think anybody else comes close. Played over 100 tests for the Springboks, retired as a world champion. Absolute legend of the game. I love this guy. If you, if you just watch him singing the national anthem, the pride and the passion that he sings it with, I wish every Springbok would, uh, would play with the same enthusiasm and passion. So, Franz Malarbe and uh, Beeston Tawarira would make my prop selection, and uh, I think I'm very happy with, with the two of those guys uh, anchoring the scrum. At hooker, the top five in fifth position, I picked Skulk Brits. He didn't play a lot of tests for South Africa, but his story is just such a wonderful one. From coming out of nowhere, making the World Cup in 2015, uh, Heineken Mayer picked him out of the blue. Um, he retired, then sort of came out of retirement, played another World Cup at the age of, what, 38, um, and played some of his best rugby. And he was a legend at the Stormers, legend at the Lions, but more so a legend at Saracens. Um, you talk to anybody in England, he's probably one of the best foreign signings that the, that the Premiership in England has ever seen. And uh, he will go down as one of the greatest Saracens players ever. So uh, looking at the other names that missed out, I'm very happy to have Skulk in that top five. In number four, I went with Adrian Strauss. In third spot, I picked John Smith. Second spot went to Malcolm Marks. But again, top spot had to go to Bismarck Duplessis. Just a phenomenal player, still put in the most perfect tackle ever on Dan Carter and got penalized for it. But 
Um, Bismarck, you know, played like an extra loose forward. He was physically very, very strong, exceptionally strong. His set piece was sound. I can't recall him ever missing missing a line out or overthrowing. I'm sure it did happen, but um, not enough for me to remember it or recall it. Um, very, very strong in the scrum because of his physical dominance. Um, he could carry the ball. Um, and I only ever saw him get bumped once by Eben Etzebeth in the in a game against the Stormers. That's the only time that I ever saw Bismarck getting dominated. Um, other than that, he was always on top of his opposition. So happy to keep uh, pick Bismarck in the side. Uh, and that's it, guys. That is my greatest Springbok side of the professional era. Uh, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think. Which players did I miss out on? Who would you have picked? I'd love to get your feedback. Uh, stay subscribed to this channel. Go and check out the guys over at Scrum Pro. Follow us on Facebook. Remember to watch our live streams every single Saturday on the Real Rugby Facebook page. And uh, be so kind to give us some support on Patreon. And we'll do this again next week. Cheers.